Okay, well, we'll get started here. Um, I want to welcome everybody and um, thank you for joining this uh, webinar, which is called Getting Your Company Up and Running in DryLink. Uh, today's speakers um, will be myself, Aaron Heinem. I'm the product manager for DryLink and for Phoenix. And Keith Hosley is with me as a panelist. He's the national sales manager for DryLink and also handles a lot of the implementations. Okay, so the agenda for today, um, we have a lot of material to cover. In fact, there's so much that I'm gonna send out uh, some training videos and things afterwards uh, because we simply can't cover everything uh, in this webinar. Uh, but the agenda will be what is DryLink? Just, so, just to make sure people understand, there could be new companies thinking about uh, using DryLink. Then I wanna talk about preparing for success and talk about some specific issues to think through then we'll talk about how do you set up your company in DryLink? And then uh, how do you set up your equipment uh, in DryLink? And once you have that uh, established, then you can set up a job. And I wanna talk about integrations as well because integrations with other software packages will help with setting up a job and talk about that. Then we're gonna add equipment to a job and show you how to take your daily readings in DryLink. Then we'll we will talk about remote monitoring and um, how you set that up and what you can do. We'll talk briefly about asset tracking. Is that something that's coming soon? And then future innovations uh, with DryLink. Okay, so what is DryLink? It's a Bluetooth-based job site data collection tool with optional remote monitoring. Um, there's a drying report that comes along with it that's very, uh, it's different from other reports. It gives you a very visual uh, view of your drying job. And it's a unique, that unique web URL means that it's live. So you can refresh it when somebody takes readings and adds them to the report. Um, it's a web portal, which I am gonna show you a little bit of the web portal today. And we have a complete asset tracking system, which is coming soon. And I'm just gonna show you a little bit of that as well. Okay, so quickly to show you what the system is, uh, in the upper right here, we have the DryMax XL. This was the first Bluetooth-based um, data logging dehumidifier, and it would uh, data log these readings every 15 minutes, send them to our cloud, and then you could put them on the drying report. You can see the app is in the middle. And then going clockwise around, we have what's called dry tag, and this is an asset tracking beacon, but it has an accelerometer inside, which means that it can tell if equipment is on or off due to the vibrations the equipment makes. Um, and that dry tag allows you to bring any brand of equipment or any type of equipment into the system. You can really track anything you want. And then down below that, you see what we call the Air Max BLE, which has the dry tag already built into it. The benefit there is if I buy a whole bunch of air movers, it, it's a lot easier to load it in when it's built in at the factory because when you pull the battery tab on the Air Max BLE, it knows its make, model, serial number, and everything. It just loads it in for you. Um, now, going around here, we're showing the dry tag on another brand of equipment, just showing you that that is possible. And then down here, we have the dry phone. This is used optionally for remote monitoring and job site alerts. And then in the middle, that's representing your technician's handset when they're on, whoops, when they're on the job. And then going around, you see the, we have the DryMax BLE, um, or if you have an older DryMax that doesn't have that, um, all you have to do is swap out the display board for $199. You can make your older DryMaxes into smart dehumidifiers. And then we make our way around to the DryTag RH. This helps you uh, it's a standalone thermal hygrometer. It has everything that the dry tag has in terms of the accelerometer, asset tracking and all that, but it adds in temperature and relative humidity sensing. You can automate your affected area, unaffected area in HVAC when it's set up as a standalone thermal hygrometer. And then above that, you can see you can add it to a non-smart dehumidifier and turn it into a smart dehumidifier. And then above that is what's called dry sense. Dry sense is bringing moisture content sensing uh, in, into the ecosystem. And it's meant to be left at the job site 
and it data logs and uses Bluetooth. It takes readings once an hour. So that's the kind of the basics of the system. And now I wanna talk about preparing for success. So in per what are the things that you would wanna think about to make sure you're successful in DryLink? Uh, one would be, do you want all smart equipment used in DryLink? So this is probably the goal for, if you're really gonna get into DryLink, that would be the goal long-term, that somehow all your equipment, you know, whether you're adding beacons to it, whether you bought DryMax XLs and DryMax BLEs, but at the, you know, to really use the whole system completely, you would wanna have all smart equipment. But to get started, a lot of people might wanna start with one truck with smart equipment you know, so that you don't have to invest as much and you can make sure that you understand how to use it before you set everything up. Um, and then uh, another thing to think about, who will use the app in your company and who will use the web portal? Now, I know right now, if you haven't seen the web portal, you're not sure who might use what, uh, but we're going we're gonna to talk through that in this uh, webinar. And then how do I get my team trained? So we have uh, not only videos, but uh, Keith, who's on this call, does uh, individualized training. We, we can utilize Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Uh, we come on site uh, when, when needed. Uh, so there are many ways to get trained, including the training videos. And then um, at this point, residential kits. This is, we developed this because a lot of people asked us, well, like, what do I need to buy? So we have a residential kit that's available, which gives you everything you need to do a standard residential job. So that would be the smallest starting point for getting into uh, DryLink. And the, the, the residential kit, uh, if I remember, I, I think the MSRP on that is around $1,600 uh, to, to get the sensors needed to get going with that. Then another thing to think about is the naming scheme for your equipment. This is really important with asset tracking, but in general, you should think about how you wanna name your equipment in DryLink. Now, maybe your company already has, you number your equipment or you might, I, maybe you already have something, but it's something to think through to make sure that it's uh, clear how you're gonna name your equipment. Then there's remote monitoring. Um, you'll want to think about, is this something you want to do? There's a lot of benefits to remote monitoring, um, but, you know, maybe to start, you, you get one dry phone and one residential kit and you, and you see how it works, but there's a lot of benefits to remote monitoring. Uh, then also asset tracking, you know, that's a, another thing to think like, hey, is this something in the long run that I wanna do? I really wanna do asset tracking. And it, it's really amazing what we can do with asset tracking. And we'll show you that. Then there's moisture points. So the dry sense, uh, you create a moisture point and we're measuring the moisture content at that point. Um, does your company wanna do this? I feel that the industry is gonna realize that these moisture points are very important uh, as you know, drying the air is one thing, but at the end of the day, we're drying materials. And this is a really important, important point of the system. And um, I really advise that people use those, but um, you just wanna decide if that's something that's for your company. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about setting aside time. And what do we need to set aside time for? Somebody needs to understand the system and really it needs to be more than one person. If you have somebody that you train and, and then they leave the company, then what happens? So it's best to have more than one person understand the system. And then you wanna have a little bit of time to set up your company, you know, who needs to be set up within your company and then set up your equipment. You know, you have to do these things uh, to use the system. So there needs to be a little time for that and then, training on how to actually do a job. So this is all part of training for success. Keith, did you have any, uh, you know, Keith being our uh, implementation uh, person, any, any comments really uh, on this in particular? Uh, Keith, are you, hopefully you're not on mute. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll come back to Keith. We'll see if he- uh, uh, sorry. sorry about that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so yeah, um, we can hear you. So, so not that you won't get into this later on, but when you mentioned the fact that there's going to be an upfront cost, I think that it would be nice to uh, point out the fact that uh, we can 
pay for this system very quickly with all of the time savings that we uh, offer with the uh, app, with the IICRC recommendations and equipment. So basically, Aaron, if you take a second, just two seconds to mention some of those time savings, windshield time, fuel, wear and tear in your vehicles, just that. Yeah, they're, they're, I, we actually have a, uh, an ROI calculator on our website. The sales team can help walk you through that. Uh, there, are, there are so many time savings to doing this stuff uh, that, um, yeah, and, and I, I do a lot of webinars talking about that. But yes, I would agree with Keith. Um, it typically pays for itself within a matter of months. And we were happy to walk that through with your company in detail. Okay, so uh, this I have a video on set up, setting up your company, and I, it just it walks through like, you know, the first person to set up their account becomes the owner, and then it shows you how you invite other people. We have admins and technicians. You know, admins can add and delete other employees where technicians cannot do that. And we've had requests for like a basic technician who can just take daily readings, so we're looking into that. Um, so. Um, and, and then setting up your company has other things involved in it, such as claiming your equipment into your company, adding non-smart equipment, adding dry tag RHs, adding dry scents to your, to your company. And I don't have the time to show all the videos, but I'm gonna send these out after the webinar. But let me show you a video on setting up your company. Then I can go to the Teams tab, and this is where I can set up my team, just like my company. I want to invite all of my employees so that we're all in the same company. Aaron, on my screen, it didn't uh, take over the entire screen. Then the video. You won't be able to see each other's jobs and equipment. And once I have them all uh, typed in, I can select the role that I want them to have. Uh, they can be a technician, an admin, uh, and but not the owner. The owner should be the one that's first setting up the account. So that's how we invite new users. And if you noticed in that video, um, if you put multiple names, they all have to be of the same role. So you, you can invite all your technicians in one uh, email and then all your ad, uh, admins in one email. So Aaron, on my video, it did not take over the entire screen, just your face is the entire screen. Your video didn't react like it did earlier. I, oh, so you, di you didn't see the video? It's a very, it's a very small, Okay. Okay. Um, well, we'll, we'll keep uh, moving along here. Um, okay. So now I want to talk about setting up your equipment. Um, so when you set up your equipment, you want to add all of the equipment into DryLink. Now, if you're testing it on one vehicle, then all the equipment on the one vehicle into DryLink. And, uh, you know, we're going to show you in the video, this video, how to add non-smart equipment um, and then I'll send out videos that show you how to claim smart equipment. It's very easy to claim smart equipment. A blue bar shows up and when, when equipment is new and it says, are you the owner? And, and, and we found new equipment. Is this yours? And you say yes. Uh, and then it goes into the company and it's automatically set up. And then now this is probably more important. I'm going to send out videos that show you how to associate a dry tag or a dry tag RH with a piece of equipment. So that happens once. So with a dry tag or a dry tag RH, the dry tag RH, this is when you're adding it to a dehumidifier. If you're using it as a standalone thermal hygrometer, hygrometer then you don't need to associate it with a piece of equipment. And uh, so let me show this video on adding non-smart equipment. I am here today to show you how to add non-smart equipment into DryLink. And we'll start by clicking on the equipment tab from the home screen. And the plus button in the lower right will give us two options. The one we're interested in is add equipment. So we'll click on that. And once we do, it's gonna ask for the name of the equipment. And we're just gonna call it new DU for demonstration purposes. And you can see there's a lot of different equipment types. And we're gonna just use the dehumidifier for right now. We'll switch the type of dehumidifier to LGR and then we'll select Excel, and we'll put in our pints per day, which is 135. This is important to enter as we need it for IICRC equipment calculations. And we'll put in the manufacturer and the model, and also the serial number is very important, so please remember to add that. 
Now we could click save and add another if we're doing multiples of the same type of equipment. It really speeds up the data entry. But uh, for right now, we're gonna hit save and finish. And you can see the equipment was added to our company. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back to adding equipment just because I wanna show you the different types of equipment and how the types of that equipment change below. Here's air movers where we have mini, cam, low profile, axial, main axial, and dual axial. And as we flip through the different types of equipment, their types in that category change as you move down the row. And as you get down to a remote monitoring handset, this is where you would enter your drive phone. And you do want to do that so it shows up on your driving report as a piece of equipment that was used. And the other category lets you enter anything you'd like. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, what we want to do is show you that the new DHU is indeed in here. And this is what it looks like in the DryLink app. So now you know how to add non-smart equipment. Okay, so that's the video for adding non-smart equipment. And, um, I, you know, I just wanted to mention that, you know, the, the dry phone, there is a, uh, uh, a, an, a line item in Xactimate for remote monitoring, and, which includes the dry phone and up to 10 sensors, which pays $55 a day. Now, you can only do either remote monitoring or on-site, but, uh, but not both. Okay, now I want to talk about setting up a job. Um, and the first bullet point I have here is integration. So, for example, we have an integration with um, InCircle. Uh, we also have one with Exact Analysis. And I can show you those in the web portal. And um, with those integrations, you can have your jobs pushed automatically into DryLink so that you don't have to double type information. You can also add a job using our web portal. And if you do that, somebody in the office can enter a job. It'll show up on the handset of the technicians and they won't have to enter the job uh, using the handset. You can enter a job using the app and you can edit the job information in any of those uh, places that I talked about. And then we're gonna show you how to add uh, chambers and rooms. So this is uh, setting up a job. So let, let's take a look at this video. We're going to start from the home screen and we're going to be clicking on the jobs icon and then clicking the plus in the lower right to create a new job and we'll name this job thermostore and you can see below that we have a description field that's an optional field that you can use if you choose and then below that we have the address field and google autocomplete will help us quickly find the address that we need and enter it and then we have the start date, which defaults to the current date. We can change that if need be. And then you can enter your insurance carrier uh, information as well as the claim number. And then below that, you're gonna see the enable IICRC equipment recommendations with a checkbox. I have this enabled. And if you have your uh, dimensions of your rooms entered and you have the pints per day of your dehumidifiers entered in the equipment details section, the app will automatically calculate all this for you. And I'll show you that a little bit later on. So the next thing you can do is you can see you can add a contact or you can add a job note. And I'm just gonna add myself as a contact to show you how that works. So I'll enter my information here. You can enter a phone number. And then when I'm done with this, uh, rather than add more contacts or job notes, I'm gonna click on next chambers because we need a drying chamber. And I'm gonna name this chamber test. It'll be category one, class one. And then we need at least one room. You can see it's named room one. Okay, we had a... Something happened here. We'll get this video started. We'll leave it as such. And we'll enter the dimensions here. We're going to enter a 10 by 10 by 8 uh, room. And the um, app will automatically calculate our square footage and cubic footage information. And then we'll enter the wet square footage. We'll put 60% for the floor. And then for the walls, we'll put um, 20% and We'll put all 64 wet square feet uh, above 
two feet. And then on the ceiling, we're gonna say it's 0%. And then we're, we're gonna add a second room. And you can see that it's telling me in my first room that really that's a class two and did I wanna change that? And I, I will hit replace, but if I wanna change it at the chamber level, I have to go back and edit the chamber to say that it's a class two chamber. This is just changing the room, but I will do that. Okay, and now I'm gonna enter the information for my uh, second room. I'll make it the same dimensions, 10 by 10 by eight. And then I will enter 60% again for the uh, wet square footage or the, wet, the percentage wet on the floor. I'm just gonna put zero for the walls and zero for the ceiling. And you can see there's a spot for insets and outsets, uh, which uh, is used to calculate the amount of air movers needed in our IACRC equipment calculations. You can see I could have entered a number, but I'm just gonna move on. Uh, again, it's telling me this is actually a class two, and I'm gonna create the job. And here you can see we're at the job overview screen, and you can see what that looks like. And the next step is gonna to be to add our equipment. Okay, um, so yeah, we're gonna to move to the next step, which is adding equipment to the job. Now, the, the smart equipment offers some really cool advantages when it comes to adding equipment to the job. And what it does is um, everything that's nearby in Bluetooth range can easily be selected. And if you're doing more than one room and you need to filter out you know, some equipment for one room and some for another, you can set up one room, plug everything in, and then we have a filter in there that says, show me the nearby equipment that's been turned on. So then it's, it, it's auto selected and you just hit assign to job. Um, now, when you're adding equipment to the job, we recommend if you're using a dry phone, the first thing you do, set up the dry phone because uh, it will automatically start uh, uh, sending readings right when it's set up. Um, and then, you know, the part that I just mentioned, adding equipment to the job using filters. And then um, as part of a visit, you can also remove equipment from the job as needed. So we'll look at this video. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign and add equipment. You can see it's all loading up, but I'm gonna go into my filtering and I'm gonna select nearby units and nearby running units only. And when I do this, it's gonna show me, so what I can do is go to room one, turn on all the equipment and there it all is already, uh, pre-selected for me. So all I have to do is hit assign to job and then tell it which room. So I'm gonna put it in room one. I'm gonna click assign to all, and then I'm gonna hit save. And now all my equipment for room one is already done. Now I'm gonna click the plus button again, and I'm gonna add more equipment this time to room two. And so um, what I'm gonna do is take the sensors out of there and then the remaining equipment is what I'm gonna put in room two. So I'll select room two and assign to all, and then save. And now I have all my equipment on the job and I'm ready to take my daily readings. Okay, and we'll move on to taking your daily readings. Uh, so um, yeah, the first time you take your daily readings is, is the time when you would add your moisture points and it's the time when you would tell it which dry tag RH you're gonna use for your affected area, an affected area, HVAC and things like that. And in the video, we're gonna show that um, in you know, setting up your moisture points. And then, you know, once, um, once you have all that, uh, once you have all those things set up in subsequent readings, you don't have to do any of that and they're all automatic. And then, um, you know, once they're set up, we can also take readings remotely if we have a dry phone and we can actually schedule readings, which I can show you a little bit in the, uh, in the web portal when we get to that. So let's show the video on taking your, your daily readings. And this is in particular doing it the first time where we're setting up the moisture points and the sensors. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to take your first daily reading. You're gonna click on the drying data tab at the top. And then in the lower right, the plus is how we're gonna add a reading. Now you're gonna see that a date and time come up. Now you can click on that date and time and backdate your readings if you have all smart equipment as it'll just go to our cloud and get the information, but we'll select the current time and date. We get our outside reading automatically. Then if you look down at an unaffected area, we're gonna select collect reading and it's gonna show us the nearby sensors we can use to automate this reading. 
and I've named one unaffected dry tag RH. We're going to use that one. And when we select it, it populates uh, the reading. The next thing we're going to do is go into the test one drying chamber and we're going to gather all of the readings from our smart equipment inside that drying chamber. You can see the outlets from the three dehumidifiers, we have affected area reading, and actually I'm going to add a uh, reading for an HVAC just so you can see how that works. This is optional. When we click on add HVAC, It'll once again give us our list of available sensors that are nearby. I've named one HVAC. We're going to assign that to room one. And now we have that in there. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to go and click on our moisture readings tab. And again, go into the drying chamber. And we'll set up some moisture points. So we're going to click on add moisture point. And we get our available sensors. We have dry sense one. The little target icon will flash the sensor that you're looking at. Uh, then we're going to select the room, the location, and the material type. Then we can set our drying target. And there are some options for us to click, save and add another, or save and finish. So now we have one reading in there. We're going to click Add Moisture Point again. We're going to do a second one. And we're going to follow the same process. We're going to select Dry Sense 2 for this reading. We do our room, location, and uh, material information again. And when we're all done with that, we're going to hit Save and Finish. And we will have two uh, moisture points set up in our drying chamber. And for subsequent uh, visits, these will automate automatically. And there you have it. We have our two readings. Now, you'll notice that uh, those readings appeared to be dry. That's because I didn't have any wet material to put them in, but you would expect that they would not be reading dry when you first put them in. And if they are, they should really move the meter. Okay, um, now I wanna talk to you a little bit about the web, web portal. So, and I'm gonna actually go to the web portal, but you can monitor your jobs. You can add a job. If you have a dry phone on site, you can take readings remotely. You can actually schedule readings um, you, the web portal is where you set up the integrations. That's a one-time thing. <clears throat> and uh, there are, you know, other settings that you can use in the web portal uh, that are available to you. Um, and we have job site alerts that you can um, set in the web portal. And you can uh, manage your inventory. So I'm going to switch over to the um, web portal. Whoops. Let me get around there. And this is what our web portal looks like. You can see I'm just logging into this account here. There's just one job. If I went and showed all jobs, including there was one active job, then it, it shows where all these, uh, you know, on a map where all these jobs had taken place. Um, and there's things I can look at in here. Um, I can click on the, this is the map view. I can click on the drying data view. Uh, I'd have to find one of the jobs that actually has some data. Let's see if I can scroll down here. Whoops. Okay, so I'm having a little technical di difficulty with scrolling down, but it would show all your affected area readings. Uh, okay. Um, we'll just keep going. We had some, oh, there we go. Okay, so it's showing all the affected area readings. Um, boy, sorry, we're having some technical difficulties there. Uh, but um, let me see if I can get down to the one I was wanting to show you. I believe this one here will render the information. So this is more what you would expect to see. These are all the affected area readings from the different drying chambers on this job. And so I can just, you can see we're getting one every 15 minutes, uh, roughly, and I can just hover over and see what's going on. So if there's any anomalies, if I'm looking at this uh, remotely, I might make decisions about where to send my technicians uh, based on this information. Then you see up here, you know, I can add a job. I'm not going to actually show, show all the functions, but I'll at least show that they're available. If I go into the settings tab, this is where I can set up my integrations. You can see what's available. If I have exact analysis, I have to get my exact uh, company ID and my exact net address. Um, in here is where I can set up my team, which I showed you earlier. 
and there's other functions in there. But this web portal is available to you. Also, you can look at your inventory. Um, it'll all show in here. You can go into any specific piece of equipment. I can add my pints per day for if they were not available originally. So there's a lot you can do on the web portal. I'm just briefly touching on uh, what it looks like. I'm going to go back to our um, presentation here. Okay, now I want to talk about asset tracking. This is something we're going to launch uh, probably end of March next year, maybe beginning of April. And it's, it's really cool. Uh, this is a very small uh, uh, image showing what it's going to look like. You have all your locations and jobs over here. We show you your everything on a map. We show your jobs, your warehouses, your vehicles. And uh, all this information is updated by all the beacons. It does require um, the gateways to be on your trucks. And it works best if you have dry phones on your jobs. But it really keeps track of your inventory in real time, which is really cool. Uh, it really assumes all your equipment is tagged. Uh, even your smart dehumidifiers need to be tagged because we need to have Bluetooth readings even when they're off to keep track of them. Um, and then um, we do have a battery in this gateway, so even remote storage facilities uh, can be um, part of this system. And uh, your equipment naming is very important to getting asset tracking set up. And I just wanted to show you on one more slide here. This is kind of the table view of this whole thing. You can see that on the on the left hand side, we have again all the locations, but now over here we have Xactimate categories of equipment. And if I click on the available tab, I could see in a summary, what do I have available by category and where it is at any moment in time. So this could be a very helpful thing for, um, you know, really any restoration company uh, that is having problems with um, keeping track of equipment, which is a, which is a hard thing to do. Okay, now I want to touch on future innovations. So as I mentioned, asset tracking, we're in beta testing now. Um, next year, uh, there's going to be a, a major update to the app. Uh, we will be adding offline mode. We will be adding a, a global scheduled readings to simplify setup. That would be, um, you know, where the app would just know that every job you start, you want one or two readings a day at this specific time. And we would just pull that data from our cloud and put it on a drawing report for you. Um, we're going to add functionality next year for multi-location companies. And then there's a, a, the idea of a thing called managed by exception. Managed by exception would be in the web portal, showing you all the things you might wanna know about your job, including things like, let's say IICRC compliance. You know, are you leaving money on the table? Are you not drying as fast as you should because you didn't put enough equipment on that job? It'd be nice to know that so you can take action and do something about that. Um, and is any equipment turned off? Um, you know, are you out of the temperature range that you expect for your drying chamber? You know, things of things like that. So that's uh, something that we're going to be adding uh, uh, next year. Okay, so this part of the webinar, I'm going to uh, uh, stop sharing and, and open it up for questions. But before I do that, um, and I'm going to send all of this out. I'm going to send links to the specific videos of the things that we just didn't have time to cover today. Um, and then I'm going to send out the link, this general link to all of our training videos, which are on YouTube in a, in a, um, in a playlist. And then I'm going to send out the link to schedule a demo or training. So that's uh, um, something that the team uh, takes care of for you. It's typically online unless there's a specific need for, um, you know, in-person training. We can certainly discuss that. And then I have Keith's contact information. As I said, he's really our uh, expert in implementation. If you have any questions as you're going along, you certainly can reach out to Keith. I'll put my contact information as well. So I'm going to put that all in an email in an email along with this video as soon as it's done, um, you know, processes online. As soon as I have a link available, I'm going to send that out to everybody that uh, registered for the webinar. And uh, with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And um, I'm going to uh, open it up to see. I have um, Jenny in our marketing department is with us and helps me out by uh, monitoring to see if anybody has any uh, questions. And uh, 
And while we're letting people have a chance to type questions in the chat box, um, I want to see if Keith has any additional items he'd like to bring up that he's seen that have to do with implementations. Yes, can we uh, speak to the fact that when you first arrive at a job, let's say day number two, that we go to the equipment tab first, we make sure that the equipment is synced. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, yeah, that really is step number one when you, you want to make sure before you try and take your readings, make all your equip, make sure all your equipment is synced. It happens in the background. You don't really have to do anything, but um, you do have to give it a second for it to connect all the equipment and sync it all to the cloud. It's great. So, uh, just yesterday, I had a customer call me up who didn't have time to set up their uh, job, but they did have their smart equipment, the Drymax XLs, running the day before. Uh, can you speak to the fact that we have a recorder inside of those Drymax XLs? Yeah, the, well, it's the Drymax XL and the Drymax BLE, both of them. They're data logging as soon as they're plugged in. So we have been able to help customers in situations where you know, something happened that, you know, they didn't set up the job. They didn't understand what they were doing. And we were actually able to go back and like set up the job, go back in time and add those readings from those smart dehumidifiers because the dehumidifier will hold 30 days worth of readings every 15 minutes. It will hold that in storage before it overwrites anything. Um, so that's a great point. Anything else, uh, Keith, from you? Do we have any other questions yet or not? Yep, we had a question come in. Do you have to close a job when you're done? Well, um, so the, the answer is to use the system as intended, yes. Now, we, we have had requests um, where people have told us, hey, couldn't you automate closing a job? Like, you know, if there's no equipment running uh, and, and no, you know, no equipment in the geofence of the job, can you just close it? Uh, but yes, it, to work as intent. If you don't, you're going to wind up with. It's going to look like you have all these active jobs. So and, hopefully, that and another point to that is, if you don't end that job, it won't release the equipment to be used on the next job. It'll ask you that question when you go to attach the equipment. But in essence, it actually does not release it. Yeah, that's a great point too. Um, it, when you close the job, it releases all the equipment if you haven't already removed that equipment. Okay, uh, Jenny, any other questions come in? Yep, um, does dry sense pick up surface temp of wet material? That's a great question. Today, dry sense does not pick up surface temp. Um, it does have uh, a uh, temp and RH sensor, but it's not surface temperature. Uh, we have been asked for that and we are thinking about, you know, should that be something to add in the future, some kind of surface temperature? but it doesn't have it today. Okay, uh, Jenny, any additional questions here? No more open questions. All right, um, well, with that, uh, I really wanna thank everybody for taking the time to uh, listen to this webinar. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna send out all the resources to everybody that signed up for the webinar as soon as I have them available because there just wouldn't be enough time to show all the videos that are pertinent. Um, like, you know, how do you associate a dry tag RH with a non-smart dehumidifier? I mean, you know, we just didn't have the time to show that, but I will send it out. So um, thank you everybody, I appreciate it. If any questions come up, feel free to reach out to Keith or, Keith or I, and uh, we will put our contact information in there uh, along with all the other uh, items that I mentioned. Thank you.